Crime is surging. Murders are soaring. Police departments are being gutted. Illegal aliens are overrunning their borders. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. That was President Trump in Ohio on Saturday talking about the surge in crime across our country. And unfortunately, he was proven right once again this past weekend. Look at this surveillance video from New York City yesterday. A shooter opens fire in a crowded Times Square sidewalk. This is in broad daylight with a bullet hitting 21-year-old Samuel Pullen, a Marine who was walking with his new wife and other family members, according to the police. Pullen was released after being treated for only a flesh wound, but police are still looking for that suspect. Meanwhile, according to reports, nearly 70 people were shot in Chicago over the weekend. Joining us with reaction is Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. Congresswoman, welcome back to the show. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks so much for having me tonight. Uh, you know, this uh, Democrat strategy one-on-one -on -one is creating a crisis, and uh, they're blaming others for it. Yeah, you're exactly right. One of the people blaming other people is Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Here's what she said about Republicans today. Watch. The president did mention that the American Rescue Plan, the state and local funding, something that was supported by the president, a lot of Democrats who supported and voted for the bill, could help ensure uh, local cops were kept on the beat in communities across the country. As you know, didn't receive a single Republican vote. That funding has been used to keep cops on the beat. I think that any local uh, department would argue that keeping cops on the beat to keep communities safe when they had to, because of budget shortfalls, fire police is, is something that helped them address yes. crime in their local communities. Okay, so she's re blaming Republicans for defunding the police because they didn't support Biden's stimulus plan. If you remember this, Congressman, a few weeks ago, she blamed gun violence uh, or crime, crime on gun violence. And if you look at the cities, though, where gun violence is up, the majority of them are actually run by Democrats. So, one, how is this a Republican issue? And why is the administration flip-flopping and sending mixed messages on why we have a crime issue? This is so typical for Democrats. This is just like Speaker Pelosi getting her hair done in a salon when salons are supposed to be closed and she's not in a mask, like she's demanding everyone else wear one. And then when she's caught, she demands the salon owner apologize to her. This is exactly what they do. Republicans didn't call for riots in the streets. They didn't call for defunding of our police or increasing gun regulations. And these cities with massive crime increases have been under Democrat control for decades. Maybe if some of this, uh, some of these policies actually worked, Republicans would look to these Democrat-run cities and say, hey, guys, you're on to something here. But their cities are being run into the ground. You and I both know that a Republican could clean up the streets in no time. We would remove and reduce gun restrictions, fully fund police, promote respect for our officers, uh, penalize rioters, and promote work over welfare. Done. You know, I sit on the budget committee. So it's hilarious now to hear the so-called American rescue plan being used to fund police officers. This is nothing that they were touting that entire time that they were trying to pa pass the 1.9 budget reconciliation. Uh, this was all about stimulus checks and, uh, and, and their Democrat wish list. It was nothing about protecting our police officers. I actually talk with a lot of law enforcement officers who are so frustrated right now by these Democrat policies policies, the way Democrats have been demonizing police officers and vilifying them. And even in Colorado, qualified immunity has been taken away from our law enforcement at a state level. And now Democrats want to do that nationwide. It is very difficult for them to even recruit new police officers, new law enforcement officers, because of the policies that they know are coming. Uh, but that just means less power for politicians uh, whenever we do get in there and actually uh, fix this, which means these leftists aren't going to actually solve the issue. And Congresswoman, the Biden administration's response to crime is to crack down on guns, implement more gun laws. And you're a Second Amendment advocate. We see cities like Chicago and New York. They have some of the most restrictive gun laws in the country. Why aren't they working? But also, how could those cities that are still going to be probably majority Democrat go about solving those issues? How do they have that change in the community that the people want to see and that they can implement? 
I think the first ch change you need to make is trust your people. Um, they obviously don't trust their citizens to be able to protect themselves and defend themselves, and criminals know that. And so criminals are absolutely running these streets and running rampant, and uh, crime is surging because of this. And they see that Democrats actually uh, promote these riots and looting and robbing of small businesses, burning down of small businesses. And you have then-Senator Kamala Harris even bailing criminal criminals out of the streets. So if you really want to reduce any kind of crime, let's start with the laws that are already on the books and enforce those. Yeah, I mean, great part. I want to switch to the border with you uh, quickly. I know that you are going to the border with President Trump this week. We obviously saw Kamala go there last week, uh, raised a lot of attention where she didn't go. She didn't go to the crisis. <laughs> what are no. you hoping to accomplish with uh, President Trump? And what does he really need to focus on while he's there? Well, first of all, Lindsay, I want to say that uh, President Trump is proving that he is still leading on the issues. He announced a trip to the southern border, and then finally we saw Kathleen Kamala schedule her own trip, um, but unfortunately she only went to El Paso, Texas. I was uh, speaking with a Democrat colleague of mine, Henry Cuellar, who is just as frustrated uh, about her visit as all of us are. She went to the most secure portion of the border and then didn't even visit the actual border. Uh, so she she may as well have gone to Europe, like she was saying that she had never been to. Uh, it was uh, very much of a waste of a time uh, for her to be there. Um, but the American people have been lied to. They've been told that the border is closed. And um, I, I had decided that this administration needs to be held accountable. So I led 23 of my colleagues to say that this is shameful, this is an embarrassment, and President Biden needs to be held account uh, accountable by being censured. So I am excited to go down to McAllen, Texas, where the actual crisis is, talk to Border Patrol agents and um, and be there with President Trump so we can actually find solutions to securing our border, like providing resources to our Border Patrol agents and giving them proper infrastructure to secure the border. Hmm. Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, thank you for your time and good luck down at the southern border with President Trump and let us know how that all plays out. Thanks so much, Logan. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.